Excellent! What's up guys, just a quick video here to tell you all that Ryzen sucks. Uh, AMD sucks, uh, Scott Watson is a jerk, uh, no one should buy any AMD products ever, Vega's probably gonna suck- Oh, uh, sorry. Okay. Hello! Yeah, no. The, the, the agreement was three wheelbarrows full of cash. Three. I'm, I'm, that's not that's not going to cut it. Uh, oh, okay, look, I, I don't play hardball here, but I just want to let you know that you're leaving me little choice but to basically use my online influence and reach, which is substantial, by the way. It's not insignificant to uh, pretty much destroy your brand and your reputation. I, I understand. Oh, also, uh, while I have you on the phone, I was wondering about those Optane samples. Do you... Hello? Hello? Well, I suppose that uh, sort of changes the tone of today's video. Why don't we go ahead and just do March builds? Uh, since that's what I usually do at the beginning of every month, I list out a couple builds part lists. So if you're building a system yourself or you just need some help getting the uh, list together, want a stepping off point, you can use these to go by. And uh, if you're looking for an actual assembly of a system, don't worry, I do those as well. And I have quite a few of those just recently, so check out my builds playlist for that. Also, uh, I ask you guys a question every month so that I can base next month's builds on your feedback. So here is the question for next month. What builds do you want to see in April? Uh, 1080 Ti, Vega based, or maybe Ryzen 3 or Ryzen 5? All of those I have no idea when they might actually launch, but if they're out by then, then uh, maybe we can do builds sort of based around those. Also, you guys voted for this month's, and of course I didn't give you too many options besides Ryzen and of course Ryzen 1. Oh my god! Oh my god, Ryzen. So uh, let's let's just dive right into it. Let's start off with my over-the-top build. This is based on an 1800X, and I have paired it, in theory, with a GTX 1080 Ti, which was just announced by NVIDIA. Now, these aren't available for sale yet. We can't even tell you when they're available for sale, but we can tell you that they'll be available soon, and we do know that they cost seven, uh, $700, and they're supposed to be 35% faster than a GTX 1080. So all that said, uh, let's, let's pair it up with the Ryzen 7 1800X. And I'm sure there's going to be actual benchmarks that come out once the, uh, the 1080 Ti is available uh, with gaming performance and whatnot. But I'm really not diving into rising gaming performance in this video because the Lord knows that's been a bit of a quagmire. And um, I, I hope I have been fair in my assessment of it so far. We're all hoping that it improves, I guess. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, though, 1800X is about 500 bucks. Uh, I paired it with the liquid cooler since you, d you can get uh, improved clock speeds uh, by just a tad at least by going with the liquid cooler. Uh, the H100i is listed as an incompatibility uh, item on this list, but that is because uh, the H100i has AM4 brackets available. You got to contact Corsair directly for them. Or uh, if you do like I did and use, with the, use it with the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, and I did that uh, in my most recent Ryzen video, which was overclocking, you can kind of see a little bit of that here. You do need an AM3 backplate if you're going to use the AM3 mount uh, with the H100 IV2 though. So bear that in mind, you would need to scrounge up an AM3 backplate or uh, probably do the smart thing and just hit up Corsair directly uh, if you want to use their liquid cooler. But I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. First off, there's the 1800X available for $498.90 Super Biz Buy, Super Buy, Bees, Super Bees has it for a dollar off. It's a screaming deal. And of course the H100 IV2. I like this cooler. I, I think it looks good. I like the sleeving on the tubing and, and whatnot. Also a good performer. Uh, and the Crosshair 6 Hero, which is uh, on the higher end when it comes to the AM4 uh, boards that are currently available. This one costs about $250 to $260, although it is a very solid board. It's got your RGB lighting effects and everything. Looks really cool. I really like what they've done, like with the accents on the VRM cooling and uh, and, and that kind of thing. It's a, it's a nice board and uh, was pretty stable for me in my overclocking tests. Plenty of SATA connectivity. Uh, it's even got that USB 3.1 header that ASUS has sort of developed um, since there is no USB 3.1 header officially right now. Although you do need uh, a special case. I think Inwin has uh, cases right now and there might be one or two other places that has them as well. For memory, we have a 32 gig kit. Went with G-Skill, Rip Jaws 5 here. Uh, I like the look of this memory. It's pretty sweet. It's a very small picture of it, but uh, you get the general idea. And with DDR4 3200, um, I was having a stability, uh, I was getting pretty decent stability with nine, uh, 2933 speed memory, and that was working with the DDR4 3000 kit that I uh, had in my testing. Uh, I think 3200, you should be just fine um, getting stable. Of course, we're waiting for some like EFI updates for the motherboards and that kind of thing, which are promising to uh, add increased stability as well um, as the platform itself develops and you know gets better and 
updates and all that good stuff. Anyway, I wanted a big and uh, pretty fast SSD, so I went with the OCZ Tryon 960. This is a 960 gigabyte version. I basically was comparing uh, several of the one terabyte SSDs that are out there. They're all around the $250 po uh, price right now. Um, you can also get like a SanDisk that's right in there or the Adata uh, SP550, all right, in, right around that same price and, and roughly equivalent performance. And then of course we have the 1080 Ti, which again, just announced by Nvidia, still doesn't have reviews out on it yet. Um, the I believe the unboxing embargo for this lifted this morning, so we had some unboxing videos that went out. Uh, and again, 700 bucks, but um, we can, with a reasonable degree of certainty, assume this will be the fastest GPU when it launches. Um, assuming, of course, that AMD doesn't come out with something Vega-based, like right in the interim and just give in NVIDIA a sucker punch. That's probably not gonna happen. Finally, for a case, we have the NZXT S340, a case I have worked with before. Very nice case, uh, looks cool, solid design. Went with the red and black version because, you know, it's an AMD build. That's some red accents in there and I think it'll match up. Also only about 65 to $70, depending where you get it, uh, which I think is a very good price. Finally, we need a power supply. I went with the Corsair RMX 750 watt. My requirements for this were basically, I wanted a little bit higher than average wattage, 700 to 800 was what I was looking at, 80 plus gold, fully modular, and I wanted cables that didn't look like ass, and uh, this particular power supply fits the bill. Slightly more expensive, comes in a little bit over $100, 100 to 110 bucks, but uh, very good power supply from Corsair, and I think anyone who gets it will be happy with it. Probably be able to use it for quite some time too. A solid power supply will last you for many, many builds. All right, that's all for the first builds, $2,200. That's pretty expensive. Um, in fact, getting up into the range where you might say there's some actually more legitimate direct Intel competition, but I think actually that is the strong points of the Ryzen CPUs that have launched so far, the Ryzen 7 ones, is they really are like right up there in performance when it comes to workstation tasks. Um, and, and you know, they're not too far behind in gaming either, uh, especially when you compare it to like Broadwell E stuff from Intel. So you're gonna get an eight core 16 thread processor in this build for significantly less um, than what you would pay for if you were going for like a 6900K, of course. Now, the flip side, and I think one of the best uh, pieces of competition for the Ryzen R7 1800X is the Ryzen R7 1700. And if you checked out my overclocking video, you might understand why. The overclocking performance of the 1700 is right in line with what you would get with a 1700X or 1800X. It's based on the same die, and it's basically got the same specs all around except for the clock speed. Uh, TDP as well, but if you're overclocking, then you're probably um, smashing through the TDP recommendation uh, numbers for that anyway. So, all that said, I have actually put together two Ryzen 1700 builds here. This one I'm going to go over first is $1,400, and this should be the build that I actually build this month. Uh, and if you guys don't believe me because I haven't built February's build yet, trust me, the February build is still coming. I actually have all the parts for it now, and, and I'll be doing that soon. But here's a $1,400 Ryzen 1700 build with a GTX 1070, and I did make some accommodations for some Cooler Master parts in here because I will be using their case, uh, and I should also be using their cooler and their power supply. But um, to follow up, if you're not uh, as concerned about theming everything, and you are okay with uh, swapping out a couple parts here and maybe having slightly less performance and slightly less uh, SSD uh, space, then you can do this build, which is $1,200 and really not too far off. But let's go over the uh, parts that I chose first off, which is the Ryzen 7 1700, of course. $330. I think this is going to be the current champ uh, when it comes to the Ryzen series because it's $170 cheaper than the 1800X. And again, you can get roughly equivalent performance if you're willing to um, put a decent cooler on it and do some overclocking. I have not done air-cooled testing with 1700 yet, so um, it still remains to be seen just how, how far you can overclock it and how stable you can get that with air cooling. But uh, I think the Master Air Pro here from Cooler Master would be able to do a fine job for that. This is sort of their updated new series since it's the Master Air series, he's just launched, I think, within the, within the past month or two. And they've got like a, a black plate over the top to make them look a bit cleaner than like the Hyper 212 Evo. The Hyper 212, we, we kind of fell out of love with just simply because there were some other coolers from like Cryo Rig and uh, Enermax that we felt like were, that just looked a little bit more appealing. And if you have a big side panel window, you, you're, you want to make sure, sure things look pretty nice. But you can get this one for 40 bucks uh, from Newegg. Very good price. And there's a $10 mail-in rebate too. Get that even cheaper. Uh, and this also comes uh, AM4 compatible out of the box, so that was also a significant impact. For the motherboard, I have the ASRock X370 Tai Chi, and if you're wondering why, maybe look over my left shoulder and you'll know why I'm building with this board, because I have it. Um, also, it's got a nice feature set as far as um, what it comes with out of the box. 
uh, from Azrock, and uh, let's see if we can check the new egg product page on this. It is a it's a 200 bucks, so it's less than the the Crosshair Six. Um, it does have a $15 mail-in rebate, um, at least if you buy it from Newegg right now, so you can get it for 185. It's out of stock, but they should be getting more in tomorrow. Uh, cool looking board, and again, a, a nice set of features. Really good power delivery on this, at least from what I can tell. Again, I haven't tested this independently, but um, I mean, look at all those phases. How could you go wrong with all those power phases? Uh, also, it's got a couple M.2 slots. Uh, it's got support for USB 3.1, uh, and ASRock uh, has been sending, even though I haven't used this board yet, they've been sending me BIOS updates, so they have been diligently working on getting their BIOS, uh, their EFI uh, firmware up to date and everything. Uh, so anyway, pairing with that, I went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is the same DDR4-3000 kit that I have been using in my testing, simply because it's one of the few kits that have been validated, and I was hitting 2933 very stably with all of my chips with this kit. 16 gigs also uh, via two 8 gig sticks gives you uh, two extra slots on the motherboard to upgrade in the future if you want more memory. Uh, I like a 480 gig, 500 gig-ish SSD for your main operating system drive. They do cost, uh, the, the, the price has crept up. It's gone up by a good 10 or 20 bucks since the beginning of the year, but still for $130 or so, uh, you have enough space for your operating system and a decent number of games and apps, and uh, I'm assuming, of course, that you're going to be also dropping in like an old mechanical drive, you know, two terabyte drive or something on top of that, so you have a bit of extra storage. For the graphics card, I actually did one of those parametric filters that PC Part Picker has, um, and it actually changed from when I set this these builds up this morning to right now. The lowest price 1080 right now is uh, the GTX 1070, uh, the Gigabyte Mini one. Um, that's uh, $379 on Jet. There was a Zotac one earlier today for 350 bucks, but that that deal must have ended or something like that. But anyway, so 380 bucks for a GTX 1070 to pair with that and that's about the price range you should be looking at. Uh, the Mastercase Pro 5 is the case I have chosen. This is a very good case. I have worked with this case. I'm not going to be building in this case. I'm going to be building with the Pro 6 because I have that right now, but that's a very new case. So uh, I just put the Pro 5 on there. The Pro 6 actually might cost 10 or 20 bucks more or maybe 40 bucks. I don't know the price directly right now, um, but you know, go with this one instead. It's got the same basic frame. Um, it doesn't have the pop-out panels like the, the like the Pro 6 has, but uh, really, really solid construction. That's what I always like about the Cooler Master cases. They're built like freaking tanks. And then we got a Cooler Master power supply in there too. 60, 650 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular ATX power supply. Uh, about 100 bucks for this. So again, not too much cheaper than like the 750 watt Corsair unit that I used. I wasn't able to find super good pricing for the Cooler Master power supplies. There are some other options from some other vendors that are out there right now, but this one does have uh, good cabling. Uh, it's all black and it's fully modular and I assume there might be a picture of the cables in here somewhere. Oh, look at that fan too. The fan's nice. Oh, and look, there's a shot of the inside. Not much pictures of the cables, but it's all black. Trust me. So there's my Ryzen 7 1700 build, and I I wanted to originally say compare this to the $1,200 build that I did towards the end of last year, which is a $1,200 build with a 7600K or a 6600K and a GTX 1070. Here, uh, you're going to get way, way more raw CPU compute performance. Uh, with the 1700 and you can get the same build I wanted to say you can get the same build for also $1200 but where did where did my entire build list go there it is for $1200 this actually turned out to be $1400 it was actually 1400 even until I lost my deal on the uh, on the on the graphics card and that went up by 30 bucks but you guys get the points but I also wanted to ask myself could I do this build essentially for $1,200. So that's my sort of third bonus build that I'm doing today, um, which is all roughly the same parts, but just a couple things swapped out. So here it is, my $1,200 version of the March 2017 Ryzen 1700 build with the GTX 1070. Uh, again, the compatibility issues that are listing here are just because these coolers have not been updated with uh, AM4 compatibility. I used the Hyper 212 Evo on this one, which is a $30 process or $30 cooler. Can get it even cheaper than that sometimes, but uh, Cooler Master will provide you with an updated AM4 bracket if you need it for uh, for this. If you don't get the, uh, I'm sure they're going to update the actual packaging that has AM4 support and whatnot. But they have confirmed it is supported. But you do have to contact Cooler Master to get the bracket. Okay, um, so there's the cooler, Hyper 212 Evo. You guys, you guys are familiar with that one. Uh, for the motherboard itself, with the ASRock X370 Killer SLI, so it's still X370, so you still have SLI support. Slightly lower end board from ASRock, so the feature set's not quite going to be all there. Uh, it is still got a decent color scheme though. It's black and white, big old K across the middle. 
because you know that's useful. Um, and one hundred and thirty-five dollars at least after rebate right now. So um, you're shaving a good sixty-ish dollars off of the price compared to the um, the uh, the Tai Chi. So saving about ten to twenty dollars with the cooler, saving another. 55-ish dollars with the motherboard. Uh, the memory kit is the same. Uh, the SSD is not the same. It's a 240 gig SSD, so you're not gonna have as much space here, but that uh, cuts off another $50 on the price. Same GTX 1070 via the filter. And then with a slightly cooler case, it's only about 15 or 20 bucks cheaper, but the Corsair 200R, solid case, good performer. Not very blingy, but uh, gets the job done. And then for a power supply, the Seasonic S12 2620 watt. Again, not blingy, not good cables, cables, but if you don't have a side panel window, it really doesn't matter. And it's a Seasonic, uh, it's 80 plus bronze. Again, it'll get the job done, and it's only about $49 right now. So there you go, guys. Those are my uh, two plus, I guess, three builds that I've done for Ryzen. Uh, I, I would totally recommend that 1700 build over the 1800X build. It's just a lot more practical. Um, and I think the 1700 is really the way to go right now. 1700, overclock it. Get, your, get all your cores up to 3.7 to 3.8, uh, which I think just about anybody can do with a really basic bit of overclocking. And you'll have a really powerful system, not just for gaming, but also for gaming and streaming, uh, or for doing workstation tasks, or doing video editing, or doing video encoding. Uh, really good for all those things. So. There you have it guys, uh, let me know what you think of these builds down in the comment section below. I always welcome you guys to post your own builds down there too. PC Part Picker is a great site for doing that, so check it out, use their filters. Um, they're, up, they're doing tons of updates right now to get all the AM4 stuff listed on the site and proper compatibility and all that stuff. And links to all the stuff uh, also is down in the video description. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.